Missing 10-year-old girl Zara Baker. Several teams of investigators, including the FBI, are going through a landfill in North Carolina. That could be the prosthetic leg. We're looking for the piece of evidence. Sir, I last thought um, I was following a ransom note from my boss's daughter. He works for a, a tree maintenance company, and our backyard's on fire. Your what's on fire? The backyard. We have not found her body. They do not have her body. We are running a homicide investigation. How long has she been missing? Um, we checked in there last night about 2.30 and she was there. Zara Baker's was last seen. Sleeping. Sleeping. In her bedroom. Her bed. Many things, many things are possible at this time. We're determined to find the truth and seek justice for Zara. So no one has seen your daughter since 2.30 this morning? No, like I said, we uh, had all that drama last night and we, me and my wife went back to bed. And my daughter's, I think, coming into puberty, so she's in that broody stage. So we only see her when she comes up, when she wants something, and that's about it. And and did you say that she was handicapped? Yes, ma'am. She has a, a both a knee amputation. Okay, she has one... Yes, yeah. She has a prosthetic leg, which apparently they're taken with her. Prosthetic leg was taken with her? Yes, ma'am. We are taking your calls live, but first, unleash the lawyers. Paul Batista, joining us out of New York, defense attorney, author of Death's Witness, Penny Douglas Fur, defense attorney, Atlanta. Paul Batista, did you hear the father laugh? In the 911 call, and he actually kind of attacks the daughter, the missing daughter, saying she's going through puberty and she's at that broody stage. What an incriminating 911 call, Nancy. Here's a guy who's obviously nervous. I don't have a lie detector, but he is obviously attempting to deceive even the 911 dispatcher. It's very troubling. Penny, you're a defense attorney. What's your take on it? Nancy, they're going to have to be very quiet. If they were my clients and I'm defending them, I would tell them to say absolutely nothing because I think they're in a difficult situation and I think they'll say things they don't intend to say, which can very easily get them prosecuted and convicted. Yes, so we are they taking need your to be calls very quiet. out to the lines. Lori in Alabama. Hi, Lori. Hi. Hi, dear. What's your question? I wanted to know since the dog sit on the wood chipper, have they found any? Uh, DNA evidence or any clothes shreds or anything in the wood chipper? No. No clothing shreds. No, to our knowledge, no remnant of the prosthetic leg. Nothing. Just that hit. However, if they have found something, Lori, in Alabama, that doesn't necessarily say they would release it. What about it, Natisha? You're right, Nancy. We have not heard anything about it, but police, as you have said before and as we've heard before, are remaining extremely tight-lipped, only letting out information that they want us to know, particularly about this search that is now underway at this landfill. And this landfill, Nancy, it's 40 acres, 1,200 tons of garbage come into this landfill every single day. So just think about the process that they are going to have to go through. Now, they have identified the particular cell that they know, that they believe that this piece of evidence is located in. To Brad Dennis, Director of Search Operations, Class Kids Foundation. Again, explain to me how out of all these tons of garbage, 40 acres, they're going to find a prosthetic leg. Well, the first process was just to being able to identify out of that 40 acres the actual area to actually search. And in many of these cases, the landfills are actually, or the trucks that the landfills are using are utilizing GPS tracking. the search uh, in a landfill. Investigators' biggest problem? No, Zara Baker. She was reported missing Saturday afternoon. Take your place, number one. Where's your emergency? Uh, yeah, my daughter is missing. 